It's the next Rescue 911. Kathy and Jim White of Loveland, Ohio, knew they could trust 17-year-old Carrie Busmeyer to babysit their children. The Whites felt they had nothing to worry about when they left their 19-month-old son in her care on the afternoon of June 16, 1990. My husband and I were going to go to a water park for our company picnic. We had asked Carrie to come over and babysit for Christopher. We were taking Danny with us, and we felt that Christopher was too young to bring there, so we thought it'd be best if we just left him with Carrie. We sat down and played for a while after they left, and we were drawing and reading books. About 6 o'clock, I decided to make dinner, so I, you know, I cut up a hot dog for him. He started eating it, and I had had a fork and a knife over at the table with me, so I walked back to the sink. And it was just maybe 20 seconds, and he had a really weird look on his face. At 5.56 p.m., a call came in to Janet Fry. Oh, my goodness. I'm on one. I'm an emergency. I'm, I'm babysitting right now, and the baby's choking, and I don't know. She, she can't breathe. What? No, he can't breathe. I'm trying to get him. I could tell right away from the tone of her voice that it was very serious. It was a life-and-death situation. She brought in Mark Baird, an EMT who's specially trained to handle emergency medical calls. Okay, listen, ma'am, settle down just for a second, okay? Yeah. Okay. I knew when uh, she said that the baby wasn't breathing, that, you know, we had to try to perform the Heimlich maneuver to uh, you know, try to clear the airway. Okay, cradle the baby's head in your, in your hand, okay? In, the, in my hand? Okay, now take two fingers. Okay. And reach just above its navel and kindly push in a little bit, not, not an inch, okay? And keep doing that for about ten times, all right? Go ahead. Okay. Oh, he's not breathing. Okay, okay, settle down. Listen, ma'am, you're going to have to let me help you. You're going to have to listen for me to help you, okay? Go ahead. Go ahead. Put the baby's head in your hand. A rescue crew was dispatched. 82 in round. Police Sergeant Mark Dermott was also sent to the scene. You get there uh, just as quickly as you can, uh, especially with a child. It's just something inside everybody when it's a child in trouble. He's dead. He's okay, okay, okay. Oh, okay, can, do you know how to give mouth to mouth? No. Okay, okay settle down, ma'am, settle down. We'll have a last squad to you. Hang on just a minute. His listen to me. Okay, listen, ma'am. We're going to have to let me help you. Try to, give, try to give the baby some breath, okay? Put your mouth over his nose and over his mouth. And try to breathe in a little bit. Not real big breath, real small breath, because you don't want to hurt him anymore. Paramedic Bob Shaw feared they could not get to the boy's house quickly enough. At that time, we knew we had a possible cardiac arrest, meaning that the heart had stopped beating and the child was not breathing, and possibly could have a dead child on our hands when we arrived on the scene. Oh, he's breathing, I think. He's breathing? Okay. No, wait, I don't know. Okay, sit down. Okay. Stop a minute, don't do anything. Okay, wait, he's not. Okay, go back to what I said. You know, I thought Carrie was doing the right thing. I hoped Carrie was doing the right thing, but I didn't know for sure. Now stop 
stop a minute. Okay. Now watch. It's not working. Okay, put the baby's head back in your hand. Okay, I'm trying. Okay, now take and compress its belly again. I am. Oh, come on, Christy. Oh, yeah. Oh, come on. That's the boy, honey. Come on. Come on, Christy. Come on, honey. Uh, okay, stop a minute. See what happens. Okay, okay. Oh, oh come on, Christy. Come on. Come on. Okay, watch a second. See what it does. Okay. Is it breathing? No. Okay, go ahead. Wait, go back. He might be. Okay, settle down. Settle down. I think he's breathing. Okay, settle down. Hang on a minute. Okay. I want you to watch him. Watch it's his belly. Oh, that's watch, me. watch his belly, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Watch his belly for a minute. Tell me if it's breathing. He's breathing. Okay. He's don't breathing. do anything. Don't do anything. Don't do anything. I want you to keep your, keep the baby level in your hands. Okay. He's taking really slow breaths. Okay, that's fine. At least he's breathing. Ma'am, settle down. <laughs> Three minutes after Carrie's call, the first officers arrived on the scene. We knew we were at the right residence. We knew 911 was on the phone with Carrie. Locked. I don't see anybody. Check around but back. we just didn't know why we weren't getting any response. Now he's kind of starting to cry. Okay, that's great. That's what you wanted to do. Oh, okay, don't don't hug him. I'm not. So, I want you to keep he's it just like that. He's on the counter right now, but he won't let me. Oh, good. It's crying. All right, all right. All right, ma'am. You did the job. <laughs> Good job, ma'am. I want you to watch him. Okay. I want you to make sure he stays, keeps on breathing. I'm going to stay on the phone with you. Is that him or her crying? What? Is that the baby crying? Yeah. All right. Oh, wait a minute. i got to go get the door. Oh, wait. Let me get the hot dog up. Okay. Oh, my goodness. It's all locked up, man. We can't see. No, we can't see. We're going to have to kick it. Okay. Let's go. Oh, my God. <laughs> One of the policemen took Christopher right away, and um, another one went along with him and sat down on the couch. At that point, I knew he was going to be okay, and he was in, you know, arms that could hold him, and that, you know, he was he was really going to be cared for. And um, I sat down on the steps and just sobbed. I was so upset. I was, the, I guess, the adrenaline was flowing. I I've never felt that way before ever. It was it was really frightening. It was a great relief when we walked through the door and found the child sitting on the officer's lap, perfectly conscious and breathing well. Carrie did exactly what she was supposed to do. She uh, immediately called 911 when she couldn't dislodge the uh, hot dog from the child's throat, and she did everything exactly like she was supposed to do. She did a wonderful job. Christopher was examined at the hospital and released. They told us when they came in after this had all happened that how lucky we were to have Carrie as a babysitter and you know thank God that she had dialed 911 or he would have died. I think everybody should know CPR and how to do the Heimlich and everybody should know to call 911 if you have an emergency. Mark the 911 operator that I talked to is remarkable. He did the job I think. He told me what to do and I just thank him so much because without him Christopher could have been dead neither one of them would admit to themselves that they're heroes but to my husband and I they sure are next when the call comes in they'll stop at nothing to save the lives of others right along